at the moment we've seen heightened hate and uh, homophobic attacks and discrimination. We've seen Uganda, for example, in May pass a law that uh, further criminalizes a community that was already very much uh, criminalized. Basically, it discriminates the whole idea of just how people are identified as being um, lesbian, bisexual, uh, gay, trans, or even intersex, because we've seen intersex persons being attacked as well. They've lost their jobs. We're seeing um, an increase in attacks, and I'm talking about physical uh, attacks on people. Social and economic inclusion of the LGBTIQ community is extremely important. If nothing else, it is the good and smart thing to do. It's not just about uh, human rights, it's thinking about the kind of the cost of exclusion. But what they mean sometimes is that they've opened the doors, they are giving employment, so there is access. And what I want to say is that access does not equal to inclusion because the fact that people have come into these spaces, some people come into the space and it is not safe at all. So it makes it very difficult to come to a workspace where there is no true inclusion, but people are just ticking boxes. Because we are talking about people who are experts, they are creatives, people who are trained as doctors, people who are trained as lawyers, trained in all of the different aspects of whatever the economy would need, but feeling that they can't be who they want to be, they can't perform in different uh, workspaces, they can't give their best in businesses, they're excluded, they lose jobs, they lose housing. There is a cost in terms of the economy and there is much more that we can gain uh, from having a more inclusive uh, society. Decision making positions that have, have ended up with an expert who is from the community plays a very positive role modeling to younger generations. People are not just asking for acceptance, they are also asking to be recognized for their expertise, for who they are in workplaces, for who they are for the country, for who they are and what it means for the economy of their countries. You cannot essentially uh, secure the human rights of any community, and this includes the LGBTQ plus community, if you do not ensure that they enjoy and have full benefit of their economic rights. For a trans person who is transitioning, it's actually very difficult. It's difficult to fit in workplaces. It's difficult to be recognized, to exist. The core of the person, the expertise they have, has not changed. So when we push that person out of the workplace because we do not have policies that, uh, that are inclusive, that accept people for who they are, then we lose out. Discrimination will be heightened when you are starting to transition, which essentially means you need to move out of uh, the spaces you've existed for a very long time. Most of the times, the spaces where we exist are the spaces where we have sort of like the social uh, structures that, you know, we are able to fall back on. We have family, we have friends, we have relatives who will give us sort of like that support. Accepting someone and referring to someone with their pronouns is key. The film industry, clothing industry, a lot of creatives have created jobs for members of the LGBTIQ community. We've seen queer-led businesses in some countries such as Kenya being shut down or being run down, you know, due to discrimination and, and violence. Uh, but we've also seen people thrive in spaces that have accepted them. The positive role that the businesses can play is, first of all, creating spaces where conversations can happen, creating spaces for people to understand sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression, uh, because this is something that, uh, while people do understand in different ways, there's a lot of misconceptions built into the understanding. Find that you ask, what is your gender? There's male and female. It can be other, or I choose not to say. Simple things like that create inclusion. Corporates, businesses, um, non-governmental organizations that commit to gender diversity and inclusion 
it's important to use the platforms that they have. It's a powerful platform to talk about these things and to really show support so that then it's very visible to the community. It is beyond just the Pride Month. It is beyond just doing that one tweet. It is beyond just doing that one story and then that's it. It is lifetime commitment because until everyone is free, then we can't just do one tweet and think that it's gonna be okay. In Free To Be Me, the economic development angle of the work is actually the connecting tissue to all the work we do. 10% of all Free To Be Me resources have been advanced for the intersex community. We're seeing more and more intersex people speaking up, more activism around intersex persons. The resources that we have are allocated for economic development programs. They are allocated in ways that also elevate the voices that tend to be pushed down within the movement. My life is the story. Every instance where I go, I face instances of where I cannot be free to be who I am. I cannot be myself. And that is a life that a lot of people live within the community. You find that while you are out, you are always being pushed back in the closet every single day. Being free to be who you are actually requires a lot of work by organizations like us, as he was, who are supporting the community, not only by uh, organizations like the Communities of Actions, who are challenging this status quo, but we need a huge population and a huge number of allies to really help us. My message is that access on its own is not inclusion. We've got to do more to really address uh, social and economic exclusion. We've got to do more to address the inequalities that are experienced by LGBTIQ community members. And so for me, bottom line, economic freedom gives people the freedom to flourish and to thrive and to impact on lives beyond their own life. We cannot ensure the rights of the LGBTIQ plus movement without securing the economic rights and LGBT persons are seeking to enjoy their full rights as human beings, just like anyone else. The call to action is to move from policy to practice. It is important for our allies, businesses, and LGBTQ plus community, importantly, occupying these spaces, to take a stand in solidarity with the movement.